All right, we're live. It is 10 o'clock on Friday, March 4th. So I'm going to be doing this every two weeks now just because my schedule has gotten a little bit crazy, kind of mostly with uh, with Performance Max, actually. That has been amazing. There's so many things you could do in that. <clears throat> um, I had some uh, questions on the most recent uh, YouTube video where one of them was, um, you know, did changing the audiences with different, um, or with the same asset group really change performance? And yeah. Um, the way that Google has structured this is now you have a group of assets and then a target and you can change those assets or you can change the target. So, I mean, be prepared to make 50 asset groups. Um, I had one this morning, I have four asset groups uh, that are live and the asset groups are actually, I have them right here. Um, one is going to the interest in demographic targeting for a very specific uh, use case for a client. One is search keywords with people who have searched this term on Google replicated that with search keywords with purchase intent. This is a different setting. And then I built a remarketing one of the people that visited those pages. Now, and now with Google's new customer acquisition only, you're going to be able to take the new customer uh, only performance max campaign that's only going to target people that are not in your customer list, clone that and then remove the new customer um, target, new customer only acquisition, and then you're actually gonna be able to target existing. The cool part about this is when you have two Performance Max campaigns, both with the same kind of structure, one going after new, one going after repeat, you'll be able to change around, obviously the audience signal uh, to your customer list, your your you know visitors, and that kind of your active users, all the good stuff. But you're going to have a uh, now a TCPA goal instead of just a TROAS. So how much would you want to pay for a new customer? And how much would you want to pay for a repeat customer? And that is just amazing. So uh, the way that we're finding success is think of it like a gigantic A-B test that never ends. So you're always going to be adding new creative. You're always going to be adding new asset groups. You're always going to be testing new signals. And in the listing groups for e-commerce, what's cool about this is you're actually going to be able to look through the listing groups and say, okay, this audience targeting uh or sorry this asset group targeting this audience did x and then this asset group which is the same asset group but targeting a different audience did y uh so for example uh in the last three days of this new campaign um my interest in demo targeting got a 2.86 roas my search keywords that people have searched on google has got a 2.73 my remarketing uh, audience got a 7.34 roas and my search keywords with purchase intent got a 4.72 roas so yes same assets, different signals, and those signals will actually share, or sorry, those signals will actually tell you which signal is outperforming or less performing. So a 2.8, 2.3, 7.3, 4.7, .7, yes. Like there is there is the uh, very, very uh, good ability to A-B test those different, um, those different audience signals and come up with a, campaign that you can actually start to make better. And that's okay. Well, why is this one campaign not performing? Is it the right keywords? Is it the right asset? Is it the, should I add additional signals to this audience that are maybe not found in my other asset groups? There's so much that we can do. And um, what's really cool is then you get to, you know, toggle and throttle a TCPA T row as based on is it going to new customers only existing customers only uh, in that existing customers only how much is new customer acquisition actually working? Like there's just amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. So we all you know got a little bit confused and nervous and blah 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 when performance max came out because it's like is it the the end of the uh you know agency as we know it and it's actually it's almost like breathe new life into google so it's really really exciting uh i am so sorry i am gonna completely butcher your name uh i'm gonna try it though i think this is a good challenge um so new becky christian on Bushalam. I probably completely messed that up, so my apologies. Uh, how much do I need to start out for an e-commerce website? If you're looking at ad spend, I would suggest nothing less than $1,000 a month. And the reason being is you want to buy enough data to know where you're... <laughs> I, I, I had no idea if I was going to do that or not. Uh, so, uh, but I would say $1,000 per month in ad spend. The reason being is that you have this X and Y axis, a time and ad spend. The more ad spend you have, the less time you need to optimize. The more, uh, so less ad spend, the more time. Um, so if I said that right, so more time it equals less ad spend, less time, more ad spend. You're buying that data and you're making your optimi optimizations based on that. So if you're if you're looking to see is this going to work and can this be effective, 
start off with an ad spend high enough that's going to get you good placement and good visibility and really give it a solid test. I, I can't stress enough that a lot of people said, like, well, I put $400 and I didn't really try it. Well, I actually didn't give it a good test. Give it at least 90 days and give it a healthy enough ad spend to say, yes, I do see where the good and the bad is coming from, and I know where to make optimizations. That's all you're really doing is you're investing into your Google Ads campaign. So start with a minimum of $1,000. That's you know my my recommendation thirty three dollars a day it's it, you know it, it sounds like a lot but it's not really when you talk about if you make one or two sales you know you're 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 probably pretty break even at the point but you're learning so that's that's the part that you need Dave hey Dave uh, hey John would add multiple asset groups one for audience one for keywords is there a way to see which one performs better yes if you are talking well Dave are you talking about e commerce or are you talking about lead gen they're actually two different things instead of performance max so let me know um, uh, Victoria hi do you think uh do you think you can start on performance max using only search or is it pointless so actually google just recently updated that if you try to start on performance max using only um only search well actually not really necessarily only search but there are now required fields so long headline is required and long headline is going to need some imagery so google is actually updating the requirements in performance max and i don't know at this date and time exactly what they are because they seem to be changing week by week but um i would say no the search campaign is actually one of the campaigns that will very heavily compete with Performance Max. I probably still want to have my control over my keywords and my bids and, and my placement first. Uh, then once you find good sustainability, start Performance Max using those keywords. Um, that's my my theory there. <clears throat> Tell us more about the new PPC Endeavor S Solutions 8. Ah, uh, is that the um, uh, starter PPC? That's actually uh, everything that we do for a much lower price per month. You just don't get to talk to us. <laughs> it sounds so stupid, but a lot of our hard costs is in human personnel. I mean, we're, we're in a service business. So uh, it's essentially you still get the team behind the scenes that does all the work led by my strategy and Regina heading, spearheading that department. But uh, you just don't get a dedicated client manager that you get to talk to because that's where a lot of the hard cost comes in. So to save that, we have some called starter PPC to get it built, get it built up and running. And then once it's starting to perform, you can, if you want to increase your S-band and or want to you know, kind of elevate yourself to a higher level of service, so we, you get a dedicated manager that you get to talk to every day. I'm uh, sorry, client managers, you're going to talk to them every day. <laughs> uh, Anthony, and I only have uh, 30 minutes today, um, so I'm going to go through these as quick as possible. Anthony, we have some products with Google uh, Shopping ads with over 1,800 clicks and no conversions. Can't figure out why people are searching for this product but not buying. We have the lowest price of free shipping. Something's really wrong there. Um, if you have 1,800 clicks on a shopping ad, standard or uh, smart shopping, Anthony? Uh, also, any updates on the YouTube side of things, budget optimization? No, not really. Uh, I would say that YouTube inside of Performance Max is operates to pretty much anything I've ever tried on YouTube specifically. Um, so YouTube uh, with, you know, essentially DSK or audience targeting, Performance Max actually has given giving us a consistent 2x of the uh, watch rate. So it's actually pretty interesting. But YouTube still, you know, on its own, when you're talking about just you know, being able to being able to run YouTube is 16 times what your target CPA is as your daily budget and at least eight days. That's still been the actual update. I've had more success if you front loaded with a lot of videos. So starting with 15 videos on a smaller budget, like $100 per day, seems to work really well. You want to have quantity over quality. If you have 20 videos that are mediocre, is a lot better than the two videos that are amazing because Google's going to find and choose and pick which one that it likes and pushes it. And 80% of the, the spend is going to be spent on that what small selection of videos. So if you give a lot, Google will usually find what it likes most. Um, let's see, uh, hello, my Pmax campaign worked great for seven days and now we're gonna conversion for twos. Hang tight, Pmax is going through a whole bunch of restructuring. If you don't have your insights tab, still hang tight until you get your insights tab. But we've seen like all of a sudden it first are up and, and then it dips and then comes back slowly. So give it time. Um, Pmax is doing a lot. Think about it, it search YouTube, GSP, discover, display, local it's it's doing everything at once plus trying to remarket so seven days is not gonna be enough for it to really figure out which audience and which area and all the other stuff so this is something that is going to be uh a, even longer than even smart shopping for example because this is using essentially built it's almost like saying hey I, I built seven campaigns and i have two days of bad performance the first week you still got to give it time because it's doing all that at once but it's doing it smarter so hang tight i would say um and until you get that insights tab to find out exactly what's going on, still give us some more time. Uh, can you recommend a YouTube video to help me with optimization? Uh, this channel, actually, this is the only thing I really know. But um, I don't really have a YouTube channel that I that I that I like a lot. Ed Leaks. Ed Leaks is amazing. I don't know about his YouTube channel, but his teachings are fantastic. Ed Leaks, and I, I, I'm. I'm saying this cautiously because I'm I'm doing it quickly. 
Ed Leaks is one of only a few people, and I don't know of everybody at the top of my head, but Ed Leaks is one of the few people that I uh, very much respect. Uh, Uzair is another one. So Uzair and um, uh, Ed Leaks, those are two individuals. I know there's more, but two individuals that just instantly come to the top of my head that are amazing. So check out Uzair's channel. Uh, it's SF Digital. He's fantastic. A lot of great stuff. Love that guy. So um, those are two that I would highly recommend. Um, what reasons could there be for an immense drop in click-through rate from one week to another without changing the ads? Ever CPC equal a week before enabled enhanced CPC, but this was only so. Um, Stephanie, the a lot of things that could be is check your auction insights tab. A lot of times when you have CTR drop, it means that competitor moved in, possibly pushed you down. So check the audience insights tab. Check the um, uh, sorry auction insights tab, and then check your search impression share, search impression share, uh, the top of the search absolute top impression share, and see if you dip there. So just check those first. Uh, Dave, oh yeah, so Dave, not e-commerce. You have to set up actually individual campaigns rather than asset groups individually. It sucks, but for lead generation, since you don't have the listing groups, you actually have to create a performance max campaign per asset group for lead gen. That's the only way that we found so far as it's being built out. I know there's about five other areas in beta. So performance max is, is only about two fifths of the way built out. So there's gonna be a lot more coming. I've seen it, it's an alpha, really cool stuff. But uh, just hang tight. There's going to be a lot more that's going to be coming out um, uh, that, that is going to give us the insights tab that is really, really, really expansive. Right now, the only way if you need to see it in Performance Max, do it by uh, individual campaigns. Um, uh, let's see. We have a smart shopping that works well, and we have over 25,000 SKUs, but 50% of our budget goes to two SKUs. Yes. So, Tommy, it sounds like you might be using a T-ROAS. If you are, um, T-ROAS is actually going to limit it to essentially, hey, what can I sell? Well, I can sell these two. So great, put all your been to those because that's what I know I can sell at that ROAS. If you're using that, um, if you're using T-ROAS, you can turn it off and, and see if you start to get more, more ad spend to those other, other products. What I may suggest is take those two. So clone that smart shopping campaign, put that smart shopping campaign on its own daily budget with those two products and then use a lesser budget and then put it together 25,000 SKUs for it to find other additional ones while you're still having good performance on your new two SKUs. However, here's something really, really, really important because I think I just messed up in saying that. Take your existing campaign, clone it, and pause the 24,998 SKUs in that campaign, but leave the two SKUs on that are performing. In your cloned campaign, stop those two, uh, or pause those two products that are working well and go after the other, uh, other ones there. You wanna have the, the campaign that's experiencing the performance needs to be the campaign that moves forward only with those two products. So that's very, very important. Best practice of running multiple PMAX campaigns with the same account. Um, if you're running e-commerce, I wouldn't run multiple PMAX. I would run multiple asset groups. If you're running lead generation, multiple asset groups are good. The audience signal is a target. So it's an audience signal is actually a target. Uh, I've seen this more and more. If it says, hey, this is the target, this is the signal, mm, it's, it's, it's the target. They call it a signal because it's not only going to target, but it starts to target that first and then can go out and go on its own. So as this evolves, we'll learn more. But that audience signal is actually a target. So don't think of that as just like, uh, uh, I know it's a polite suggestion to Google, and it is, but it's going to go there first, which means eh, it's ultimately basically a target. So um, if you're running multiple uh, PMX campaigns for lead generation, good. Just keep one asset group with one target per campaign. This way you can throttle on and off t TCPA, TCPA, all the good stuff. Um, and then increasing decrease budget. Um, so that's what I would recommend there. Uh, if it's e-commerce, try multiple asset groups and you can start with all of the same assets to different targeting. Once you find out what works, now clone those targeting, try different assets. So you're AB testing both sides. Um, Anthony says smart shopping. Uh, all right, so we have some products in. Oh yeah, so if you're running, if it's if it's smart shopping, um, I would pause the products that are receiving the most amount of clicks in the last like seven days. Pause those because if you have like 500, 500, 500, and you have a bunch of other SKUs, pause those three and let the ad spend go somewhere else. Um, if not, uh, I, I their ecom priority might not be working, or your feed might have low quality. Those are the other two areas you need to check. Uh, what does DSK stand for? Display search keywords. Essentially, the, the GDN's network's targeting capabilities that use keywords. Uh, Casey, any recommendations for or against running multiple performance max campaigns at once targeting different audience signals? No. Um, again, your audience signals is your target. So you can have multiple performance max campaigns targeting different audience signals. I would actually, it, you'll see Google does a best practice where it says, hey, you're, you're need at least two, your customer list and, a, and, a, and an interest. 
I found that to be the case. Uh, I don't want to blend those two together. I want to isolate and I want to identify what works and I want to expand out into that. Um, so I like to start heavily segmented and you see only one interest or one uh, customer list or one you know look like audience essentially and start there and then I can A-B test. But whether that's in a multiple asset group or multiple campaigns seems to be working so far pretty well in either scenario. Um, Let's see, John, my clients have no videos to use with Femax will still work well with Google Generate videos. I would not. I mean, uh, go to billo.app, B-I-L-L dot A-P-P. Uh, yeah, billo.app, B-I-L-L-O dot A-P-P. The, it's like for 75 bucks, they'll have an influencer create a video for you. At least start with that. Even if it kind of quote unquote sucks, just start with that. You need it because that's heavily top of funnel of who it's going to target based on who's interacting with it. It's like, hey, I removed the first step of my funnel. Can I start middle of funnel? Yeah, but should you? No, I'd rather start with the low quality top of funnel video at least just to get the up and running. So my opinion, I'm, I'm actually not starting performance max campaigns without video on purpose. I don't I don't want to go back to the client and say, yeah, that, that didn't work. Well, why? Because I started it incorrectly and I should have asked you for this. It should have stood my ground. As an agency, I have to do that. So that's my recommendation. Uh, in performance max, you mentioned website links can be put with the keyword because people type it in the browser. Yes, so you can actually use the URL of your competitor's website. Now, Google is starting to crack down on that. I said that two years ago that this is not going to be around forever. It looks like Google is starting to crack down on it, but Google will tell you if it's not going to be included. So put the key, put the website in there, and if it does work, it seems to be good, but sometimes they'll say this is not included in your targeting, this keyword is not included in your targeting, and they'll have that website URL. It seems like it's starting to more, get more like HIPAA compliant and privacy compliant. So just know that that's a degrading feature, but if it works, it works great, um, and try as long as you can. <sighs> Uh, we do have two rows. Okay. Um, and then Tommy, let me just go back to your question. We have a smart shop. But yeah, 50, exactly. So I figured <laughs> uh, with that T row, as you're basically asking, Hey, Google only spend, if you know, you can make X and it says, well, I know I can make that here. So it's going to do that. It's going to repeat. Use that same process. Uh, John, what is your suggestion on optimizing video assets when you have thousands of SKUs? What landing pages should uh, one target? So optimizing video assets, I would keep it theme based where it is. If you have thousands of SKUs, hopefully your thousands of SKUs aren't like, Hey, I have a, a spare tire and then a pencil. Like hopefully it's a little bit more theme based. I would make video assets that are showcasing a your best performing products and maybe have them as a group. I would have a B a brand story. I would have C um, testimonial videos. So you want to keep it a little bit high level. Like what videos do, do Nike have? Running and lifestyle and activities. It's not like this shoe and then that shoe and then this shoe and then that shoe. They have a brand video. So if you have thousands of SKUs and there's a theme, make your video about basically like your about us page why you should buy from us our customers are happy where we came from all those things and then you can do some videos also about your best performing products as well that's what i would start with that's what i recommend uh people usually don't see a youtube video unless your product's like amazing and say yes i need that um if it's products that are purchased frequently uh just by the general population i would stick with more brand videos and then feature those brand videos uh, sorry i would feature those products in those brand videos but like lifestyle like nike does something that it's a person running around the track, but it's showcasing the shoe that they're running around the track. What did that do? Lifestyle and product highlight. Uh, also try standard shopping with the same results. Are, are our products coming up for broad search terms? Is there a way for them to only come up as phrase match instead of broad? No. no. So Anthony, um, if you're, let me just go back up to your question here as we're flying. We're, we're going fast. Uh, yes. Um, so it's smart shopping. So what I would do, Anthony, is run standard shopping first um, and look through the search terms. If standard shopping search terms, I know you say you tried it, but look through the search terms very closely because if those search terms aren't even broadly related to the product that you're selling, your feed optimization needs work. So your titles and your descriptions. So I would I would really try that there. Um, and maybe uh, you could try Performance Max. Performance Max will give you audience insight and search terms, but it seems to be performing better for e-commerce so far. So that's another thing you could try. Uh, Husni, uh, in your last video about asset groups, you max your recommended of using only one type audience per asset group, but I noticed you combine the customer list with the custom intent audience. I'm testing everything. I have like 50 of these running. The reason why I'm testing individual versus multiple is sometimes I won't have uh, an audience signal that is like gold. Uh, so I'll try to use a uh, customer list inside of it. So it all depends on the current campaign. I'm I'm testing everything. If I do have a if I do have an audience interest that is beautiful and perfect, that will be one. If I sometimes have one that's like, well, it's broadly related, so let me see if I can give it another signal. And if that 
if that performs well, I will then split them and see which one is performing well. But if I, I don't want to start off with bad performance because again, I'm an agency, I have to start with the best performance. And then how I find out afterwards, do I group and then segment or do I segment then group? Either way is a, is a plausible scenario. It just depends on the availability. Uh, we have one client that, um, that does hiring for nurses. And one of the audience groups is like registered nurses looking to be hired. I'm like, oh, that's going to be his holy segment. But if like nursing was an interest group, I'd add some additional signals there. So just think of it like that. Like how close can you get to your target? And if you're too far away from your target, how can you supplement it? Uh, do you recommend combining customer lists with other types of audiences? Bingo, what we just talked about. Uh, I'm having a problem with furniture store in Merchant Center having problems with shipping values different to the feed. Yep. Now what should you do? Have you, yes. So Dave, hop into your, um, it, it's going to be a little bit wonky, but a quick fix just to get you unsuspended or like the looming deadline of when you're going to be essentially removed by Google, go into the shipping settings and then um, post in there a shipping rate that is $1 higher than your landing page. That will fix it. You don't need them to be exact. You just need the GMC shipping rate to be one penny higher than what's on your landing page regardless. So if you want to hop into your GMC shipping settings and then make a make a custom shipping price based on like weight or, or area, you just need to manipulate that data enough to be one dollar or one penny essentially at least higher than what's on your landing page. That'll buy you the time to get you reapproved and then you can then go back in and figure out exactly what happened. Um, there's so much structure here that I can't say like, aha, here's the fix. It could be an app. It could be a feed that wasn't, I had Shopify not push an update to GMC. One time I had to call Shopify and say, Hey, can you please republish this? So like, oops, sorry. So troubleshooting is going to suck, but a quick fix is going to be just at least getting a, that shipping rate in there higher than what's on your website. Okay. Per performance max. How long should I wait uh, before doing a budget change and how should I increase weekly or bi-weekly? Oh, so it depends. Um, I've had performance max. I went from $500 day one, $2,000 day two, 3,500 day three. And the thing has horrible ROAS. It's like 1.33, but it's just skyrocketing partially because the client is saying, how want I get to $30,000 a day? And that's going to, that's going to suck. So I got to get there like at least an aggressive stair step. Um, but I'm leaving it running wide open. So if, but here's the thing too, is there's a few methods you can try. There is no wait for performance max. It's not like smart shopping. What's nice performance max is think of it like a Facebook campaign is doing outbound blasting with native ads. I love that means that if you found a target, you don't have to wait till Google learns. So you can simply start to scale up quickly. Now you can still outpace your, your conversions. Standard operating procedure here applies. You don't want to necessarily say a 12 day time. Like I'm going to do it tomorrow. Like, you know, go, go follow equally. Um, but you can still be fairly aggressive. Smart shopping, the reason why it sucked scaling is because it was heavy remarketing first. And then once that was burned, then it started to find new audiences. So you got to wait for that to burn and then find new audiences. This one's finding new audiences doing a little bit of remarketing afterwards. So scale, the procedure is really good. Here's a pro tip. Run it for 30 days with wide open, maximize conversion, maximize conversion value. Then after 30 days, do a TCP or T ROAS and then start to scale afterwards. Reason being is because you're using native ads. And if it's finding good audiences and you want to find more audience, you're basically asking it to find more audience, but just the cream of the crop and then see what you can spend there. But if you have heavy segmented asset groups, some asset would be like, hey, at 300% ROAS, you have 20 asset groups. Well, these five didn't work, but these 15 worked well. Great. Now you have 15 asset groups you could pour a whole bunch of money into. So heavy segmentation is key. Woo, we are flying, people. Um, let's see. Do you think that Pmax will work with low margin products with high budget available? Think about you're paying for it. So regardless, if you had to get down to 50, if you got down to dollar clicks on average and you had a 10% conversion rate, which is fantastic, you're still still paying $10 per conversion. So if your CAC and LTV is in line, cost of acquired customer and your lifetime value are in line, yes. But if you're like, hey, I'm, I have a $10 product and I have to make 50% of my money and so you're going to need essentially a 20% conversion rate at $1 CPCs, not going to happen. So just do some simple math and see if it works. Um, if I do two PMAX campaigns with two different audience signals, uh, keyword versus audience interest, will they fight each other for budget or will they both spend a full budget? It depends on how often those two are overlapped. So it really, and that's the thing too, it's so, it's so uh, different per account and per targeting. I can't, I can't tell you, but what I can tell you though, um, for certain is that you might find that one works a lot better than the other or both work mediocre but here's the best part dave is the asset group that earned the click is the asset group that does the remarketing 
golden rule here, everyone. The asset group that earns the click is the asset group that does the remarketing. So they're simply kind of isolated from each other. They might be going after the same target, but whatever target wins is indicative of whatever audience is better. Again, use a good standard operating procedure here. If you're getting better performance here and lower performance here, add more admin here and try to tighten up that TCPA and see where your spend is and then start another one. So it's continuous growth. And then after you find that, what assets inside of those asset groups worked. Look at your details. If your details say like, you know, good or sorry, best, good, low, swap out those lows and swap out those goods and see if you can make the whole thing best. That was actually going to increase the performance of that entire campaign because that asset group, now you're cycling out newer ads. That's one thing you try before you start new ones. So there's many different things that you can actually manipulate here. Kevin Rp Max and Smart Shopping at the same time. Uh, they uh, Google said no, I've seen sometimes. Um, but just know that only one campaign is going to enter the auction. So if Smart Shopping is doing a really good at display remarketing, that's going to keep running at a low amount. Performance Max is still going to be doing cold traffic. But if those two people are ever found in the same audience, Smart Shopping wins. Oh, sorry, sorry, Performance Max wins. I have not had a... Uh, performance max campaign run longer than seven days after a pmax campaign and then it just like gotta get like one or two impressions a day so i just killed it but yeah it's it's just know that if you're going to take two really really good performing campaigns smart shopping is built into pmax so understand that um but pmax does heavy remarketing display which it could still run small so just know that that might happen uh on smart shopping i've scaled up my ROAS to 500 percent which have a lower cpc but caused a large reduction in clicks and conversions compared to the maximized conversions go back to maximize so if uh, if you scale up your t ROAS to 500 basically you're reduced your finite audience down to here's the people that google knows it can convert to 500 percent then it's only going to go after that once that audience is burned then you're done so yes i would say that use maximize conversions but use but throttle your daily ad spend instead of your ROAS and you're going to find that on if you segment by time and by day You'll see like on days that I spent X, I got Y. Uh, now take time back into consideration. So just know that that's, that's going to be a latent, latency there. But if you go back 14 days and you look at the time and day, you're going to say, well, at this spend, I get this row. As once it gets higher, my row is dips, but then it goes lower and my row is good. But then it goes higher than my row is dips. Try to identify a good daily ad spend that is a slightly aggressive. So 20% over the days that show good performance and then increase your daily ad spend. Don't try to increase just your T-ROAS because T-ROAS means finite audience. Remember that you're restricting down to who Google thinks it can convert. Uh, does the shopping ad does not, oh, does, does the shopping ad does not receive data once this, once we start running the performance max? Um, yeah, so smart shopping and shopping, they don't really because there is shopping built into Pmax. So you're trying to start two shopping campaigns with the same product targeting, the same user. Not going to work. Uh, what should I avoid as a new Google ad account? Uh, don't listen to Google. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, so uh, what you should avoid, um, avoid leaning into automations too much. If you're doing lead generation, start with, you know, phrase and exact match CPC uh, keywords. Start with, you know, a good manual CPC. Learn first. Don't jump right into automation if you're new to Google. If you are an amazing Google ads manager, you can jump right into automation because you know what to expect. But start with everything as manual as possible. Uh, learn first, then grow. But um, if you're a new Google Ad uh, user, like kind of newer to Google Ads, watch like every single one of these videos on our channel. There's like 300 videos. I know it sucks, but you're going to get better than a college degree just by watching our YouTube videos. Um, all right. So should we use Shopping Ad? I got one minute left. Should we use Shopping Ad and Performance Max on the same account? Uh, let me do this here. Okay. Uh, should we use Shopping Ad and Performance Max on the same account? And which... Uh, one will perform better. Uh, yeah, you can't use both of them. If, uh, my ad account keeps suspending, bro. Yeah, uh, there's a lot there. Uh, why does it keep suspending? Um, that's going to be a big issue. If it's misrepresentation, um, if it's circumventing policies, it, there's that's like an hour-long conversation that we have to have. To have. Uh, did you ever get the error? The search location doesn't match the campaign site location, although everything is set up perfectly. Yes. Um, it, de uh, it depends on how you target it. If you did radius or if you did city, state, like it's... I usually have that if I switch to radius and make sure that it's wider than I what I need to have, that actually that actually goes away. Um, it's a little bit buggy though. Uh, and then try the mobile versus desktop. For some reason, there was a bug there that mobile didn't really show up, but desktop always did. So it's not that it's not actually showing up. It's just that's something that I would really test is trying to do a, a radius targeting. And I have to go. Uh, how to find a niche for providing Google Ads service? Man, if I knew that, it probably wouldn't be an agency. <laughs> um, one good area is to check on Amazon and look at the top 100 performing best products. Those are really good targets to start at. Uh, bro, some local businesses keyword search are very low. What should I do? 
local business, start a, uh, start a local campaign. Um, just, just, I would, I would supplement the local campaign while you figure it out, uh, but then start broad uh, also. But if it's a local business, local campaigns are probably better because you're going to have a lot of offline conversions you can't track. I have to go everyone. Thank you so much. And I will see you soon.